All right, Ole Miss has been one of the fun stories in college football. 7-0, and ranked seventh in the country, and they got a tough one with LSU this weekend. Let's talk to our insider from Ole Miss, Neil McCready of rebelgrove.com. Neil, what's going on, my friend? Man, I'm just uh, just trying to make it each week right now. You know how that is, just just day to day. Um, it's been a it's been an interesting interesting season so far, and it's about to get really interesting with these next two weeks because uh, Ole Miss has a couple of real road tests. Road tests. Nothing against um, Georgia Tech or Vanderbilt. I mean, they they it is what it is. But it's not like going to Baton Rouge and College Station. They're they're in for they're in for an exam here over the next couple of weeks. Well, I was going to say, I feel like this is a uh, – we kind of expected this, right? You looked at the schedule, and you didn't know how the quarterback situation was going to play out, and the running game has been so phenomenal. But we knew it was backloaded, and they took advantage of that. And now they're playing with, uh, I think, some momentum that they can maybe carry through. Yeah, that's exactly right. You know, it was interesting. When, when you looked at it before the season, that's kind of what I said. Was I said, you know, there's one game that really sticks out. Um, that's Kentucky, October the 1st. You said, that's going to be a challenge. And it was came down to really one or two plays and uh, Kentucky had a false start and uh, then Ole Miss made a, a play to free the ball up and they win the game. And um, after that, you know, you, you knew that Vanderbilt would be Vanderbilt and that was going to be a, a bit of a trap, but they, they, they sprung the trap. They were fine. And then um, you knew because Ole Miss struggles with Auburn. They, they don't beat Auburn very often. And, um, there, there was going to be a little mental thing there and there kind of was, but they, they got it done. And so, like you said, here they are. They're seven and zero. People say, "Well, they haven't played anybody," which is valid. Uh, on the flip side, they've played who they were assigned to play, and um, you know they don't make the SEC schedule. The SEC does, so that's that's who they drew to open was Kentucky, Vanderbilt, and Auburn, and they've beaten them. So they're three and zero, and they have some momentum. But yeah, it's backloaded because now you get into a stretch of schedule that, I mean, David, they could they could lose all these games. They could win them all. Um, I mean, there's none of these games, including Alabama, that I look at and go, oh, no, there's, that's not winnable. The flip side, none of these games, uh, none of them of the next five, I, do I look at and go, oh, yeah, there's no way they lose that. I mean, they, they, they so everything from 7-5 and five to 12-0, and 0, I suppose, is on the table. So teams have been able to run on Ole Miss, but Ole Miss has been able to really run on teams. So let's start off there on the defensive side. They, that can't continue for this team to continue at this pace, right? No, absolutely not. If it does, they'll lose Saturday. Um, they and they'll lose the next Saturday. Uh, they they they're, co- they're about to face you know Jaden Daniels, who uh, keeps plays alive with his feet. And then last week at Florida, and look how good is Florida? I don't know. Um, but you know, last week he started being able to connect with Keishawn Butte, who probably is the most talented wide receiver in the league. Whether he's the best or not remains to be seen. But but he's awfully talented. And so they they connected some, and so now they've got that going for them. And uh, Daniels makes plays with his feet. He tries to be kind of perfect, and they've been telling him, "Hey, take some chances. We want you to throw into one on one. We want you to let our guys make plays." LSU has these extremely talented skill players, and if he gets that into his head now, I mean, they become a dangerous team. Uh, Ole Miss has first part of the season tackled really well. Here, the last two weeks, they haven't tackled well at all. And uh, they've got to get that short up. They they let they were ahead of Auburn twenty one to nothing, and they let um, Robbie Ashford, the Auburn quarterback, kind of run around a little bit. And then next thing you know, Tank Bigsby got going, and uh, next thing you know, that was a ball game. And um, you know, at twenty one to nothing, I thought, man, they might have to blow these guys out. Who knows? Maybe this team's better than I thought it was. And then they flirted with disaster, and then they made a couple of plays, and they they ended up winning by two scores, but. To answer your question in a very long-winded way, yes, they absolutely have to get it short up defensively or, or when they face the Devin A. Chains of the world and um, K.J. Jefferson and, and um, Sanders, the running back, and, and I mean, the, the cat at Alabama, Gibbs, my God. I mean, those kind of guys will kill them if they don't get much better in terms of run fits and angles and tackling and bringing guys to the ground. So how has the offense evolved because – you know, back in the day, you would have said, yeah, Lane Kiffin likes to run the ball. But then recently, it's been more about that aerial attack. But here they are, one of the best backfields in all the country. You know, I try to write about this a lot. I feel like I do. Um, and, and maybe it's just because I'm not a big national writer. Um, Lane Kiffin does the – it's, it's kind of a complicated thing. People get so hung up with his social media. And his tweets, and they're funny. And he tweets the picture of him the day that he left Tennessee, and he tweets the picture of the day that he got fired at 
SC and the tarmac and all that stuff. And he does funny stuff on Twitter and he has the dog and all that stuff. But what he really does well is dating back to his days at SC to his days at Alabama is whatever you give him. Hey, here are the tools you have to play with, to work with. He says, okay. And he fits his system around those tools. He doesn't take the tools and go, I'm going to jam you into this hole right here, despite the fact that you don't fit. And then I'm going to come over here and I'm going to do the same thing. And it, it, we're just going to make this work. No, if somebody does. He says, okay, here's what you, he does well. And here's what he does well. And I think this is what we could do. And then he just sort of fixes his deal. And last year, that was Matt Corral. And it was spread it around, let Corral do what he does well. And this year, they're going with the 19-year-old quarterback who's good. He's going to be a really good player. I think he has a chance to be an elite player down the road. But right now, he's 19 years old. Is fairly inexperienced and all that. He's got a pretty good offensive front. And he's got these two and sometimes three running backs who are special. And they've just absolutely relied on the running game. And it's worked. It worked last week. Auburn put seven in the box. That didn't work but eight in the box that still didn't work. And he's still just kind of, he's, he's very creative in terms of creating an offensive system, a game plan. And then I think it's well established that he's an elite play caller. He just sees things kind of in real time that I don't know that every coach sees and he's able to capitalize on it. And they've been able to do that with their running game kind of all season because the passing game, they don't really have that over the top um, Elijah Moore, Braylon Sanders kind of guy. Um, so far that can take the top off the defense can, can really keep you honest. They've got, you know, they've got some guys who are possession receivers, who great hands, Jonathan Mingo, Malik Heath, those guys, but he's just kind of fixed the offense in a way that, that works best for what they're doing right now. Neil, the faces can change at the coach there at LSU. The faces can change offensively, defensively. But one thing remains a constant winning in Baton Rouge is extremely difficult, just like winning on the road in the SEC. But I, I put Baton Rouge in a different part of that as well. Just how sure. difficult is this matchup? Oh, it's tough. I mean, look, the last time Ole Miss was 7-0, it was 2014. And that was Bo Wallace and um, all those cats, Robert Kimdichie and Laramie Tunsil. That was a talented team now. And uh, they they just gone to Texas A&M and won pretty convincingly. And then before that, they beaten Alabama at home. And they went to LSU, and it was at night, but it got loud, and it got weird, and they freaked out. I mean, Bo Wallace was turning around, yelling into the crowd, yelling back at people. That wasn't Bo. It wasn't who he was. That place is different. You've seen it. Mm -hmm. um, I've seen it. It's different. You, you have to take them out of a game. The longer you let them hang around, the more it gets weird. You have to do what Tennessee did two weeks ago. That's pop them. Square in the mouth, get them to kind of turn on their own team, take them away. It had nothing to do with what time of the day the game was played. It had everything to do with you have to punch them in the mouth early. And when you do it, you're okay. But when you don't, you let that place get different. And when it gets different and loud, I've just watched too many really good teams freak out there. So there's something to it. I mean, I've watched extremely well-coached, talented teams freak out in that stadium. No doubt about that, Neil. Thank you so much, man. Uh, I'll see you here in College Station soon. Well, actually, I'll see you, yeah, here in College Station soon. Yeah, next week. Talk to you then.